is really pouring out today. Man, it is so wet, I almost didn't decide to make this video. But then I was like, eh, what the heck, let's do this thing. Hopefully this background noise isn't too bad. Okay, so one of my least favorite things to hear as a photographer is, wow, that camera takes really nice pictures. Or, so-and-so is a really good photographer, they have a multi-thousand dollar camera. Like seriously, stop, just, just stop. When Babe Ruth was smacking home runs, you think people said he had a really nice bat? Or Michael Phelps, did he win all those gold medals because he had a good swim cap? Eh, maybe. But before we get too far off track, I'd just like to point out that these are tools that successful people use. These tools do not make them successful people. So yes, if you handed someone a $300 camera and then handed them a $3,000 camera and had them take the exact same photo, then yeah, the $3,000 camera is probably going to look a little bit better. But today, I'm going to do the unthinkable and show you how to take professional photos at night with a smartphone. So before we get into the meat of the video, quick crash course for those of you who are unfamiliar with camera settings. Alright, so you've got three basic camera settings. You've got aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Whenever you're shooting with manual settings, it's important to balance these three things to get the, to get the type of photo you want. So the longer the shutter speed, the more light you're going to let in, but the blurrier everything moving is going to be. I'm holding a full tripod right now, but there was just an accident over there and they're arguing pretty loudly. Never mind, they seem to have sorted things out and this is a really cool spot, so we're gonna keep shooting here. All right, so as I said, the longer the shutter speed, the more light we're gonna let in, the brighter the photo is gonna be, but if subjects are moving, they're gonna be blurrier because that shutter's open for a long time. Aperture controls an image's depth of field. A really shallow depth of field looks like this, while a less shallow one looks like this. Now, it's a little confusing because the lower the aperture number, the bigger the aperture. I don't know why that's how it is, but that's just how it is. But all you need to know is the lower the aperture number, the more depth of field your photo is going to have, and the brighter it's going to be. A bigger aperture number is going to have more things in focus, but it's going to let less light in, so you're going to have to compensate with other things in your camera's settings, like ISO or shutter speed. Last but not least, we have ISO, which is just your camera's sensitivity to light. A low ISO number means a darker photo with less noise, and a high ISO number means a brighter photo with more noise. What's noise, you ask? Well, it's all this background stuff going on that makes it hard to hear my voice when I'm talking. <laughs> But, all jokes aside, camera noise looks like this, and a good way to think of it is it's grain, it's random colors in your picture, it's your camera trying to make it look brighter, but it, this is the cost. It's grainy, sometimes colorful, but generally just looks bad. If you want to learn more about using your camera settings, there are already tons of informational videos on YouTube, so go check those out. But without further ado, let's go take some photos with a smartphone. Okay, so first things first, you're gonna have to figure out how to put your phone in manual mode. Now on my particular phone, you just swipe right and go into what's called pro mode, and it's pretty straightforward from there. On older phones or other phones, you might have to download like a third party app, but you should be able to figure it out. That's the only part of this tutorial you're gonna have to do on your own. Okay, so I'm gonna make the assumption that you figured out how to put your phone in manual mode now. If you haven't, drop a comment down below and I'll try to help you out, but it really is dependent on the phone. All right, so the particular phone I'm using is the Galaxy S7, and a few things to note are that this phone is a fixed aperture of 1.7, you can't change it. I also know that if the ISO gets close to 800, it already starts to look noisy, so we're gonna try and keep it below that. Pretty much what that means is we're gonna need to find as much light as possible, and all we can really mess with is shutter speed. Ugh. You might be wondering what's going on right now. Well, it's actually a new day. It was so rainy before that we couldn't finish the video, so here we are. We're at the first location. That is the Space Needle. But yeah, this is your classic smartphone shot location. You know, you're on vacation with your family and you're like, oh, Hey, there's the Space Needle. I want to take a picture of that. But not every tourist owns a DSLR, so let's try and take a picture of this with a smartphone. 
hey, there's, a, there's not really any light here, but I think it'd be a cool spot to take a photo. What do you think? All right, so as you can see, I've got my phone mounted on a tripod right here. Now, obviously you don't need a tripod like this. You could use anything. You could use a cheap tripod like this. You could use your shoe. You could use a rock. You could literally just use just use one of these. You can't see that. But you could just use a phone stand. You could use a pop socket. Whatever you have on you. I have a tripod, so I'm gonna use that. But you definitely don't need something that fancy. Okay, so right off the bat, here's the angle I found. I think it looks pretty cool. So let's see what a picture looks like if I just take it on auto mode. So honestly, not that bad, right? But let's see what we can do if we just tweak the settings a little bit ourselves instead of using auto mode. So going from auto to pro. All right, so let's see what happens. So like I said before, I wanna keep my ISO as low as possible because when my phone's on a tripod like this, I can just make a longer shutter speed and I won't have as much noise in the photo. So I'm actually gonna take my ISO all the way down to 50, which is as low as it goes. Next, I'm gonna compensate with shutter speed. So I'm gonna bring that way down. So I'm gonna try 10 seconds, which means my shutter is gonna be open for 10 seconds. All right, let's take this photo and see how it looks. Okay, wow, that's kind of crazy. So we actually let way too much light in. Uh, let's try a much, much shorter exposure. Let's try four seconds. Still way too bright, but kind of cool looking actually. All right, let's try one second. Ooh, that is looking sharp. Oh my gosh. Okay, I actually love how that looks. Now that I've gotten close to the value I want, I'm just gonna take a couple more pictures with a little bit shorter shutter speed, a little bit longer shutter speed, and see if we can get that perfect photo. But this, this looks so good. This is something you could print out, you could hang up on a wall. The quality is actually pretty decent. So again, as you can see, there's nothing wrong with the first photo, but it's just not as high quality as it could be. You're not getting the most, like, performance out of your smartphone. Take a look at our manual settings and whoa, it's just a world of difference. So not too bad for using a smartphone, right? But you know, maybe you don't have a big tripod on you. Well, here's an example of how you can take a cool picture with just your shoe. All right, see this? Shibuya. Now let's head to our next spot so I can show you another type of photo we can take at night. Oh, hey there. Welcome to the next spot. As you can see, we're at the Amazon Spheres. These would make for a pretty neat photo, right? Yeah, probably, but we're not gonna take a picture of those. We're actually gonna take a picture of what's lighting my face right now, which is these lights. Now, you might be wondering why we're gonna take a picture of some lights. Well, we're not even taking a picture of the lights. We're actually just gonna use them as the background. One thing that's neat about smartphones these days is they have a really small aperture number, which means we're gonna get a nice blurry background. So, when we get these lights out of focus, we're gonna get an effect called bokeh, which is gonna look super cool and super professional. I'm actually coming right back here so I can actually get some decent lighting on my face. So there's two things we need to keep in mind to make this effect happen. First, we need to make sure that our subject, so whatever we're actually taking a picture of, is far enough away from the lights that we get some extra background blur and a nice depth of field. And second, we need to make sure that our subject is well lit, otherwise our background is gonna be super bright and our subject's gonna be super dim. So we need to make sure to pick something that we can get a decent distance away from all these lights but also is bright enough that we'll be able to see it and the background. Okay, so I think this bench is as good a spot as any, but we need something to take a picture of. Hmm. All right, so once again, I'm gonna be using a shoe as a tripod, just to show that you don't need to have a big tripod on you. And I'm gonna be taking a picture of my other shoe. All right, so once again, I've got my ISO at 50 and my shutter speed at two seconds. So let's see how this looks. 
Okay, so the shoe's not the best example, but here's a picture on auto mode. Here's a picture on pro mode. Not a huge difference, uh, but I'm gonna copy a photo I took, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and I'm gonna try and take something very similar with a quarter, and I think I'll get a much more emphasized effect. Aha! So I found a different tree, same idea though, but now we've got this rock, and if I just, just place the quarter, Kinda like so. Alright, so I took those last ones handheld. I mean, my hand was pressed against a rock, but I wasn't using a tripod. So hopefully they still turned out sharp. Uh, so here's before, here's the auto mode. Again, nothing wrong with it, but it's just a little grainy. And then, bam, when we go to manual, it's like, ooh, ooh, that looks pretty professional, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, we've got one more photo to take. Uh, this one is probably my favorite out of all of them. So without further ado, let's go to one last spot so I can show you my favorite type of photo to take at night. Ooh, here we are, we're at my favorite spot taking my favorite type of photo. If you can't tell, there. <laughs> We've got the famous arches in the background, and we're gonna take a long exposure with these in the background. Uh, if you don't know what that is, essentially we're gonna leave the shutter open for even longer than we have been. So instead of maybe one or two seconds, we're talking like four, five. I don't know if we'll be able to get more than that with a smartphone, but we'll try. And essentially what's gonna happen is everything moving in the photo, it's gonna get super blurred out. Now that might sound weird, but everything moving is gonna be blurred out, while everything stationary is gonna be pin sharp and it looks really cool. If you haven't seen one before, you're in for a treat. So I'm setting up, hold up. Okay, that was impossible to do with one hand. But set up the tripod right now. Uh, like I've kind of shown before, you don't need a tripod, but I'm tired of taking my shoes off. It's really cold and I have a tripod, so I'm gonna use it. But again, you don't need one. You just need something to keep your camera steady. It could be a shoe, it could be, piece of gum on the sidewalk you know it doesn't matter what it is uh, but a tripod is ideal or something like I shown before which is the UFO 2 tripod uh, I've got a review on this if you want to check it out that particular tripod is like $20 comes with a smartphone adapter so if you're into smartphone photography definitely check that out but without further ado I'm super excited to show you how this photo is how this photo is how this type of photo works so let's get into it. All right, so I've got the phone set up here. Uh, first, we need to wait for a car to drive through the frame and try and take our photo. And I'll show you what that looks like on auto mode. Although, spoiler alert, it's not gonna work. Okay, so we've got a bus coming, right? So let's see what those look like. So you get something like that. It kind of just looks like a terrible photo. But let's see what happens if we put the phone in manual mode and take a much longer exposure. All right, so we're gonna flip it to pro. I'm gonna keep the ISO at 50. Let's see if we can get two seconds. This is a little bit brighter of an area than we would like, but we'll see how it works. Car coming, Let's go. Oh geez, that was bright. So unfortunately, the phone has a fixed aperture, and the problem with that is it's really just letting too much light in. This spot is too bright, but hope is not lost. We just need to find somewhere with a little less light so we can leave that shutter open for longer. Alright, thanks again. Alright, so real quick, I'm sorry if the audio is terrible, but my last long exposure was a total failure. So I'm just showing you now that it's actually possible. It just takes a little bit of work. Uh oh, I'm gonna miss this one. Hopefully you guys were able to see how you still can take good pictures with a smartphone at night. Now, it's going to be a little more difficult you're gonna have to do a little bit more planning than you might with a DSLR, but it can be done. Also, I'd like to point out that all these images were completely unedited. 
Uh, you can get a free version of Lightroom for your phone and edit these pictures and make them look a little bit better. Now, granted, they're shot in JPEG, so you really can't edit them that much, but you could do minor tweaks here and there, or, you know, you could still throw on an Instagram filter if you wanted to do that. But hopefully you guys learned a little bit more about cameras and basic camera settings. Uh, you know, the phone is definitely limited with one aperture, although I think there are dual aperture phones out now. But regardless, by utilizing ISO and shutter speed, you can still get pretty unique photos. Also, a tripod definitely helps. Anyways, that's it for me. Hopefully I was able to help you out. If so, be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. My name is Josh Winiarski. Check me out on Instagram, and I'll see you all in the next one.